tell them boys to tighten up. Tighten up. Let me hear you say. Oh shit again, hype now. Tell them boys to tighten up. Tighten up. Let me hear you say. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Cass here, and we are here to deep dive into the Tennessee Titans' third round pick out of the University of Liberty, that being quarterback Malik Willis. So, with looking at Malik, there's many things you got to deep dive into, and that's why we're going to be looking at his draft bio here. So, in his draft bio, it says this. Willis transferred from the University of Auburn to Liberty after the 2018 season with Auburn coaches decided he would not be the starter. The NCAA denied his waiver request to play immediately, so he redshirted with the Flames in 2019. He took his team to a new heights in 2020, leaving the Liberty Flame to 9-1 in his 10 starts with his arm, going 170 of 65 with a 64% completion percentage. 2,250 yards, 20 TDs, and 6 INTs. And his leg, he led all FBS quarterbacks with, a hundred, with 944 rushing yards on 141 carries, averaging 6.7 yards per carry, with being tied for most along all FBS players with 14 rushing touchdowns. He tested positive for COVID-19 in December, but did not miss any games with the Flames regular season against Coastal Carolina was canceled. They beat Coastal in the Mortgage Bowl. They took a step back. Alright guys, this is an analytic showing how many people that watch my videos that aren't subscribed. So if y'all could do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. It's free. If you can unsubscribe later if you don't like the content. But back into our regular scheduled Tennessee Titans breakdown. 2021 going 8-5. and five, But Willis made plays through, made plays through the air. Going 207 of 339, 61% completion percentage with 2,857 yards, 27 TDs, and 12 INTs, and led the squad in rushing, going for 197 attempts on 878 yards, 4.5 a carry with 13 touchdowns. He was named Leaning Tree Bowl MVP after Liberty went over Eastern Michigan. Where he ran, where he threw for 231 yards and three TDs. Um, Willis played two seasons for the Tigers, playing in seven games in 2017, going nine, going six of seven for 45 yards and one TD, and uh, 16 carries with 221 yards with one rushing TD. In nine contests the following year, going five of seven for 24. And 12 rushes of 88 yards in the TD. Willis was the Georgia's Class 7A Offensive Player of the Year at Roosevelt High as Ro at Roswell High School, leading his team to a state championship. His senior year, his uncle James Arison played linebacker at Virginia Tech and played 10 seasons in the NFL. So, his NFL comparison: Arm Jay Cutler. Player, Bill, and play style, Jalen Hurts. So he was a projected first round overall pick. We took him in the third, which is why I think it's a very elite value. So this is his NFL draft overview. Upside quarterback with special parts of his game, but will not guarantee that he will be able to assemble properly into a finished product. Willis uses his rare combination of elite rushing talent and a rocket arm to unlock explosive plays in two different ways. He has the arm to beat safeties to the deepest part of the field, making impressive throws from the inside and outside of the pocket. On the flip side, Willis' mechanics and operation inconsistencies lead to erotic timing and accuracy. He doesn't throw with enough touch, protection, and receiver separation with both issues. But Willis also pressed over the second half of the season and never looked comfortable in the Louisville offense, in the Liberty offense. On the pro level, additional film work and laid pro style passing attack could allow for a more focused reads and help him see the field faster and more quickly from the pocket. Players call, play callers must learn lean into his special talent as a runner and include runs into the game plan. Even if Willis fails to reach his passing potential, running ability doesn't slump and has the talent to produce on the ground at the level between Lamar Jackson and Jalen Hurts. 
So these are some of his strengths and weaknesses, and then we're going to get into how he fits into the next future for the Tennessee Titans. So, he has an electric dual threat ability. His frame is consistent. He has rare escape ability and elusiveness on the go. Finishes strong. Ran for over 100 yards five times in two years. Able ability to pace his re release according to need. Ability to recognize blitz. Makes deep throws with twisty hip with twitchy hips. Arm strength capability of winning in tight windows. Beats safeties on deep sideline throws. Ability to work through progressions. Wide lens field scans. Rollouts, scrambles. So basically he's the typical on the run QB. He's good, but the difference with Willis is he has a rocket arm with him. Now here are some of his weaknesses. Sets depth with away from him at times. Below average climbing pocket and staying throw ready. Deep eyes rather than standing in and delivering in the face of pressure. Too many missed opportunities to make an easy on schedule throw. Allows throwing windows to close on him. Poor field recognition. Passed and took unnecessary. Pressured and took unnecessary sacks. Throwing mechanics lack repeatability. Needs to calm and settle his feet for the pocket. Elbow drop and overstride have been culprits. Deep balls can be rushed and little flat. Lack of touch greatly diminishes his merger for a error on his throws. Ball placement, accurate plummets, and major struggles between bringing in snaps and securing through contact in 2020. So, with the way he's going to fit into this offense is very unique to me. I think he's going to be very much this season used in goal line situations. I think there might be a package for him at QB and Hassan Haskins at running back when we get to the goal line in some forms. I wouldn't be surprised with that because Hassan Haskins might be one of the best goal line players I've ever seen. Well, Malik Willis could be very much a read option back with Hassan and that would also give Derek and Ryan a break and actually give some of the rookie guys a chance to be on the field. Ryan has a two years left on his deal. If he can prove he can still be an elite starter in this league, I feel like if Malik doesn't develop, it's not that bad of a thing. See, Ryan's only 33. If he can prove in two years that he can get back to some of his statistics as we want to see. Uh, look, he was 16th in passing yards. He was 16th in touchdowns. He was 24th in interceptions and 8th in QBR. He's not, he wasn't as bad as people give him credit for. But when looking at a guy like Malik, the upside's definitely there. Now, if he fails, he we only spent a third round pick on him, and Ryan's still there. If he does good, you feel more comfortable with Ryan leaving after two years. But I very much see Malik, at least maybe, if he can figure out the things that he's not understanding about the pro level, he could very much push to be a starter in this league for Tennessee. But if you guys like this video, remember to leave a like. If you really liked it, subscribe. And if you have any recommendations for the Tennessee Titans pro uh, breakdown going forward, make sure you leave it down below in the comments. Plus, let me update you guys real quick. I had some problems with my PlayStation 4 yesterday. So, a LAW video was not able to be put out like I wanted it to. But, we will get back to the programming on Wednesday. Will be the next LAW main event. And then, LAW um, Power Up will follow that Friday. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. If you really like to subscribe, this has been your boy Cass, and I am out. Bye, guys. Tell them boys to tighten up. Tighten up. Let me hear you say it. Oh, shit again, hype now. Tell them boys to tighten up. Tighten up. Let me hear you say it.